I just finished watching the live-action Avatar on Netflix, and I need to talk to someone about it. There's been a lot of discussion about the show ever since it was released on Netflix a couple of weeks ago, and the general consensus is that it's just fine. It's not as bad as the last live-action adaptation that we got, but it's nothing special. I guess it was special enough to get renewed for seasons 2 and 3, but I, I don't know. The fan reaction to this seems to be pretty tepid. I see a lot of people complaining about, especially the younger cast like Katara, like Azula, and while I think their performances leave a lot to be desired, as well as some of the other younger actors in the show, I'm gonna come to their defense a little bit. Because I think especially the younger actors were massively let down by the writing, by the directing, by the overall production, you name it. In today's video, let's focus on one of those things, what I believe to be the biggest flaw in the live-action Avatar The Last Airbender. You could argue that the new Avatar's biggest flaw is that it's just, meh, whatever. It's not so bad that it's fun or entertaining to watch, something that could be memed to death. But it's also not so good that you just gotta keep watching, like you gotta dive into the next episode. I'm a huge Avatar fan, like probably a lot of you are, but it really just didn't improve on anything that we saw in the original series, and the things that they added and they changed, uh, with a few exceptions, most of them were just kind of unnecessary. Ultimately, while I was watching live-action Avatar on Netflix, I just wanted to watch the OG animated version. Why should I watch the live-action when I can go and watch the superior version, which is also on Netflix? On top of that, as I was watching the live-action version of this, I came to appreciate a lot of aspects about the original animated series that I didn't really think about before. Specifically how Michael DiMartino, Brian Konetsko, the rest of the team that worked on that OG animated series, how they're masters at visual storytelling, how they can take hugely important plot and character moments and convey them to us as an audience just through visuals, no words. They are masters at showing and not telling. And unfortunately, that really held back, in my opinion, the live-action Avatar. Let's talk about a couple of scenes just from the first episode to help illustrate my point. So first off, the show decided to start in chronological order by showing the genocide of the Air Nomads versus an animated series where they decided to tell that story through flashbacks. And for some reason, the live-action show had an obsession with trying to come up with a reason why the other nations in the show didn't come to the defense of the Air Nomads during Sozin's Comet. In the animated show, as you learn more about the world, it kind of becomes clear why no one came to help them out. You learn that the Air Nomads were kind of detached from the rest of the societies, like they kind of bounced around and did their own thing, didn't really involve themselves in the politics of the other nations. Their air temples are usually in places where a non-airbender wouldn't be able to get to because they're not able to fly. It's something they don't really talk about in the animated series, and I don't really think they need to. The Fire Nation surprise attacked the Air Nomads and the Air Temples. There was probably only a small percentage of people who even even knew about Sozin's Comet. And by the time the other nations figured it out, it obviously would have been too late. There's no way that they can mobilize a force to get to all of the air temples separately. But in the live action, it starts off hot. It's two earthbenders fleeing the Fire Nation capital. They're trying to get classified military intel out of there and back to the Earth Kingdom. One of them escapes with the message and the other is captured. And for some reason, that random Earth Kingdom soldier is brought to the <laughs> freaking throne room Room in the Fire Nation capital. Something I only thought was reserved for like Fire Nation VIPs. I don't know why they wouldn't take this guy over to like a prison cell or something like that. But I don't know. They take him to the throne room and Fire Lord Sozin appears and he proceeds to just explain why he let his friend go with the message. He's like, haha, now your nation's forces, the Earth Kingdom's forces, will be focused on their own borders, leaving me with the opportunity to go attack the air nomads without any extra other stuff and then he proceeds to kill him and after i saw that scene i i just thought why why would sozin fire lord sozin who at this point is the most dangerous man in the verse bother with telling his nation's most classified military secrets to this random earth kingdom soldier that he was just gonna kill anyway like this earth kingdom soldier is so far beneath sozin like why would he even bother i get it that it was to show like well it doesn't matter if you know anyway because i'm just gonna kill you so who cares but it's like, okay, 
when Darth Vader shows up at the beginning of A New Hope, he comes on to Leia Organa's ship and he starts kicking ass. He's got a mission. He's like, Yo, where's Leia Organa? Where's the senator? Where are the plans that she intercepted? I need to know now. He's not stopping to explain what he's doing to random rebel soldiers. He picks one up, starts choking the shit out of him with one hand, demonstrating his power and his cruelty, but he's not like, I'm doing this because Leia Organa has top secret plans about our uh, secret weapon that could destroy it all, and she's trying to smuggle it. No, she, he doesn't bother. He's just like, I got a mission. I'm trying to find info i'm trying to find this person how, how can i make it happen and when he does ultimately explain the exposition part he's talking to like his fellow military commanders one of them comes up to him and he's like are you sure it's okay to hold this person she's kind of dangerous and he's like well if i have leia uh she may be the final link and finally tracking down the rebel base and then some other guy comes up to him and he's like oh there's an escape pod but there was no life on it he's like okay go ahead and track that uh, escape pod because it might be where they're hiding the plans that they intercepted from us he's not talking to like random rebel freaking grunts Darth Vader Leia no one stops to explain just like straight exposition right all of that is taken care of in the opening text crawl here's how I would do that scene if they really insisted on having this moment where Sozin enter interacts with this Earth Kingdom grunt. They manage to capture a random Earth Kingdom soldier. They bring him to the throne room. He's all beat up. He's disheveled. He's on his knees, barely even conscious. Fire Lord Sozin enters the room, but you don't see his face yet. It's obscured by shadow. There's a bunch of flames behind him. Someone acknowledges, oh, Fire Lord Sozin, well, we got the prisoner for you to let you know that that is indeed the Fire Lord. Random Earth Kingdom soldier, he looks up. He's like, oh, now that we know your plans, we'll be ready for your attack. He's cut off because Fire Lord Sozin doesn't care. They really have an obsession with burning people alive in this show for the shock factor. But anyway, Fire Lord Sozin, he can still burn him alive, show him that he's cruel, he doesn't care about life, whatever. But ultimately, he doesn't care what this random Earth Kingdom soldier has to say. He's just going to burn him alive, turns to one of his military advisors, maybe a fire sage, and says, okay, now that the Earth Kingdom's forces are going to be focused on protecting their own borders, mobilize our troops and go wipe out the air nomads. Boom. Done. Move on. In the live action, they really just feel the need to stop and explain so much. Stuff that they were able to get so tight in the animated series. Very rarely do characters in the animated series stop and explain to you point blank what is exactly going on. It's much more organic than that. But even though people are stopping and explaining things left and right in the live action series, they don't do it nearly as well. And even as someone who is intimately familiar with this series based on the show and the comics and all the stuff that happens in Korra and those comics and the books, I was still kind of confused. Let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at this scene with Aang deciding to leave the Southern Air Temple before the Fire Nation attacks. Now in the original show, again, they're able to take so many emotions, so many deeply important character moments and condense them down to just a couple of scenes. In a flashback, we see in the scene with Aang and Monk Gyatso, they're playing Pai Show, and then he does the little thing where he air bends Aang's like little shawl over his face and switches around the pieces. It shows that not only is Monk Gyatso a mentor to Aang, but also someone he's friends with. They take the little pastries that they were working on and they throw them at the other master airbenders. They have a good laugh about it. And again, it shows you that they're friends, that they like to goof off. And that's an important part of both of their characters and who they are. Later on, Aang finds out that he's the Avatar and he's like, oh crap, that's crazy. And there's a scene where he tries to play with the other airbender kids. And they're like, I don't know if you could play with us, Aang, because you're the Avatar, it would be unfair. Aang, of course, is super bummed out, and he's like, oh man, as a viewer, it's obvious that he feels isolated, but never at any point does he turn to the camera and is like, man, I feel so isolated and left out because I'm the Avatar. And then finally, when he overhears the other airbending masters telling Monkey Yatso, hey, we're going to have to separate you and Aang. It's the best thing for the world. Aang overhears that and immediately he's like, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming. I'm going to bolt. That's the only thing I know I can do in this moment. We get that as an audience without ever being told that is the case. Again, he's not turning to the camera and be 
being like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with my potential responsibilities as the Avatar. I just got to get out of here. No, he, you see it on his face. He makes the decision. He runs away and then he gets trapped in the iceberg. Compare that to the live action series. And how do they choose to show that emotional journey that culminated with Aang leaving the Southern Air Temple and getting trapped in the iceberg? They're like, you know what? Let's have this kid do a monologue on a CGI set to a CGI puppet talking about how overwhelmed he feels, how he's scared, how he'd, he's a goofy kid and not some sort of savior. That is a lot to ask from an actor that is so young. I think little Aaron, who plays Aang, he does an okay job of the scene. I feel like with what he had available to him, he did what he could. But again, that is a lot to ask from a young actor. Those same conditions led to legendary actor Ian McKellen breaking down while filming The Hobbit. And what does he say during this monologue? I'm just a goofy kid who likes to goof off and eat uh, banana pudding or whatever it is and play with my friends. I'm not a savior. Oh man, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so scared. And ultimately, the reason why he takes off on Appa is because he's just like, you know what? I just got to clear my head. Let's go for a little fly. Versus in the animated series where he's like, holy crap, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know how to deal with these emotions. I just got to bolt. Which, in my opinion, is a way stronger character motivation. Way more interesting to watch. It's a moment where the script, the production, the direction, it's failing these young actors. I don't blame the little kid actors, man. I mean, they're like, they're just kids. They're teenagers. It's clear that they need a little help, like with better writing. And yes, while it's true that good actors can overcome sometimes bad scripts, you got to be like a damn good actor. I'm thinking like Matt Smith in Morbius. I don't know how, but he somehow turned in a pretty decent performance in that. But these little kid actors, man, they're not seasoned veterans. They're, this is definitely the biggest project they've ever been a part of. They don't have a ton of experience. And they're being left out to dry by poor writing, by poor directorial decisions. Like, if you're a director, it's much easier probably to direct a kid actor being like, I don't know, remember a time when like you felt so overwhelmed emotionally that you just felt like you had to go into your room or you had to run away or you had to hide. Okay, now that you have that, Hold on to that feeling. We're going to grab a shot of you running over to Appa, hopping onto him, saying yip yip and whipping the reins like you're stressed and mad and frustrated and angry. And then we'll get a shot of you guys flying away versus, okay, now that you have that emotion, channel it into a two minute monologue. Ultimately, what we're seeing is why certain things don't translate well to live action. These moments that I'm talking about, this visual storytelling that made the original animated series so great is because they had animators, storyboarders working on this project, framing those moments every step of the way versus in a live action adaptation, it's relying mostly on the writers. The writers want to write dialogue. They want to tell you versus show you like an animator would. All we can really hope for at this point really is, I don't know, maybe hopefully things just change when they film book two and three. And while I can go on for much more about other aspects I didn't like about Avatar live action, some aspects that I did like as well, that's where I'm going to end the video. Thanks so much for joining me in today's episode of Ray Nami, and we'll see you in the next one.